In this video tutorial, um, I have been asked by a SketchUp Hub student how to create a corner sofa from scratch to uh, specific dimensions. So if I just click on this image, this is the image that was provided to the student from the supplier. This is the diagram they have provided and you can see that the overall width including this little segment here which does appear to be rounded is 311 centimeters and uh, they have stipulated that this section here with the two cushions the two seat cushions is 181 and then obviously when you add on this corner uh, section it adds up to 311 centimeters. So I work in millimeters, so it's 3,110 from here until here. And then from here until the end of that second cushion, it's 1,810. And I have checked the website and the depth of the MIDI is 990 mil and the depth of the corner section is 108 so this is it right here and you can see that this is curved this corner um so i'm just going to start creating this corner sofa and the best way to do that initially is just to create block rectangles just to make it really easy. So um, we know that the width of one of the sections is 1810 by 990. So let's just create that. So we're going to start at the origin. We're going to click and drag in the direction of the red axis and we're going to type 1810 and enter. And then we're going to go up following the green axis and we're going to type 990 and then just bring that across like so reverse that face and now we have a white rectangle so this is the overall shape of the midi section but we're going to add a little bit of detail to refine that so let's create an arm uh, let's give that a width of 200 and let's create a back section. Let's give that a, a width of 120. And there we go. Um, what's really important is that the overall dimensions are correct. Not so much the detail with regards to arms and back sections. Unless you're creating um, a bespoke sofa and you're making construction documents to help a joiner or a carpenter. Um, if you're creating the sofa to help you with space planning, then it's really just important that you get the overall dimensions correct. But I suppose if you're gonna be showing this to a client, you want to try and make it look quite professional and therefore refine the details of the geometry of the, the 2D symbol. And I'm gonna show you how to do that even more now. So what I'm going to do is select the arc tool and just curve this off a little like so and just remove that geometry that we don't need. And I'm just going to divide this line into two. So I'm going to find the midpoint, bring that down along the green axis because there are two cushions on this midi section. I'm going to delete this line and this line. You can't actually see this line because the green axis is covering it, but it is there. And then what I'm going to do is add another curve to this seat. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. That's not big enough. Okay, that's fine. And delete that geometry. And I'm going to add another one here. Just remember to change the segment size 
so that you're getting nice smooth curves. So that's grand. What I'm going to do is make that into a group and just copy that over. Or just, sorry, make a duplicate um, and just do that. So let's just explode that and that. And that is our MIDI section. So I'm going to make that into a component and I'm going to call that MIDI section and create. And there is our first component of the MIDI section. Let's just measure this to make sure that our measurements are correct. So that's 1810 and that's 990. So that's great. So that's our first MIDI section. And what we're going to do is just rearrange how this is looking to make it a bit easier when we're creating this. So I'm going to rotate this around and bring it down to the origin and just snap it there. Okay, so this is just to make it easier for us when we're creating it to try and position it correctly. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a MIDI here. We're going to have a corner section here and then we're going to have another MIDI here. And we already know that the distance from the end of this section, this MIDI section, right up here is, well, let me just double check, 3,110. So from here to up here to the end um, or to the other side of the corner section is 3,110. Let's just get a little guide point here. So it's 3,110. So there's our guide. And what this also means that is that the other MIDI section will not be going any more beyond this line either because that's the overall width. So let's take a copy of this and let's just bring that up and then let's rotate that around. We need to flip it because we need to have the end, the arm, sorry, on the other end. So there it is there. And what I'm going to do is just bring it along here and then bring it up so that it snaps onto that guide. And what I'm going to do is bring it along. Now let me get this right. What am I doing? Oh yes, yes, okay. Let me just cancel that. Let's create another guide from this corner along 3110. Okay, that's it. And then I'm going to move it along until it snaps on that guide. If you struggle to find the guide so that you can snap onto it, just zoom in. There we go. So let's just click Zoom Extents to take us back out again. And let's take a look at what we have. So we have this corner and then we have two MIDI sections. And we need to finalize the geometry of this corner section. So let's join this end point to this corner and create a line and do the same here. And let's just double check those dimensions. That's 1300 and that's 1300, which is great. If we just measure all the way down here, this entire width, it's 3,110, which is correct because if we refer back, the overall width was 311. Uh, you should always double check your measurements intermittently because it means if you make a mistake, it, they're qu it's quicker to rectify instead of waiting until the very end and then double checking your measurements. Now, I want to join these two edges here and then obviously I want to create lines here to join to this line and I think the most precise way to do that is to make the end points visible. 
So already you can see the end points here. And what I'm going to do is connect those. And then I'm going to connect that line. And then I'm going to connect this line. And I have to do that because these are now components. So these are, you know, entities in their own right. So I have to go over this geometry here to create this face. And let's just reverse that. So now we have the corner section, but we need to refine this a little more. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, uh, don't forget that the depth was noted as 108. So if I just find the midpoint here and bring that the whole way along, you can see that, it, that the line turns pink because it's perpendicular. Although once I reach the end point, that pink disappears. Let's just pan this down a little. So what I want to do is, uh, you can see that as you go on, go on beyond that end point, it goes pink again, and that's what we want. So we're going to click outside or beyond that end point so that this is uh, properly angled. And then what I'm going to do is measure 1080 and then press enter. And there it is right there. And whoops, let me just draw that again. And then there we go. And now if I bring this out, you can see that it's perpendicular to the edge again. And that's what we want. And I'm just going to click anywhere beyond that. And I'm going to do the same on this side. And for some strange reason, it's staying pink on that edge, which is fine. I'm not going to argue with it. And I'm going to remove the geometry that we don't need. So we don't need all of this. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is this is the depth of that seat, although... I'm going to assume that depth include, includes this section here, which is the back section. Let me just get rid of the guide here because that can be just a little bit distracting. And let's select zoom extents again. Let's remove the visibility of the endpoints because I don't think we need those any, anymore. And I'm going to add more curves to this corner section just to soften it a little. And I'm going to select the arc tool to do that. And then just create a curve there. And to make sure that it's the same on both sides, I'm just going to uh, split this in half. I know that it's properly split in half because I just saw the pink line there, which indicates that it's perpendicular. That just means that these two lines are meeting at 90 degrees. That's all that means. Um, what I'm going to do is delete this geometry. So don't forget, there's a line here as well. And I'm going to make this into a group. And then I'm going to make a copy. I'm just going to copy this, you see, onto this part. I need to rotate that 45 degrees and then I need to flip it along the green axis and then rotate it again. And just snap that end point to the, the other end point and explode, explode, remove that geometry in the middle, and there you go. You might need to do that a couple of times um, just to get the hang of that. But that's the quickest way to um, make sure that this arc is mirrored exactly on this side. What you could do is just take measurements on each side here of where you added that curve and do the same over here. Or you could do what I just did and create a duplicate of one 
and then remove the line that was created originally down the middle. What I'm going to do now is make this into a component. So I'm going to type corner section and then create. And what I'm going to do is create the back cushion just like I have in the midi section here. And I already know that it's 120 mil. And the quickest way to create a back cushion is to use the offset tool. So I'm going to select the face. I'm going to select the offset tool. Make sure that I'm clicked on that edge or well, hover over that edge, click and then drag and then type in 120. Then what I'm going to do is connect these two endpoints using the red axis and then these two endpoints using the green axis. And then I'm going to delete the geometry that I don't need. Okay, but there's also a line here and a line here that I don't need. So I'm going to remove that. But there's still a line remaining. And that's because that line belongs to the MIDI section. So I'm going to double click there and delete that as well. And don't forget that anything that's deleted in this component is going to be deleted in this component as well because this was a duplicate of this one. And as you can see, that line has now been removed too. The final step is to select all of the components and then right click, select make component and then type corner sofa and then create. So what we're going to do is just Take a look and double check the dimensions once more to make sure everything is, cor is correct. So I'm going to select the tape measure tool. I'm going to click here and drag all the way over here to this edge. And you can clearly see that it's 3110. I'm going to do the same here. 3110. The depth is 990 and the depth here is 1080 which is exactly the same as the dimensions that were specified in the graphic that the SketchUp Hub student had sent to me and that is how you create a corner sofa.